This is day four of Tick Week on News Center Maine, and tonight we focus on how ticks survive and thrive in Maine. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control says black legged ticks, which spread the most disease in the U.S., used to be confined to warmer climates. But milder winters and longer, hotter summers are allowing them to move into new areas of the country and Maine that were previously too cold. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee joins us now to show us how ticks are surviving in environments where they would have frozen to death 30 years ago. Viv? Hi, Pat. Researchers tracking ticks throughout the state says, say change, the changing climate is creating new habitats for deer ticks. And in those new habitats, new species to prey on, all of them helping advance those diseases ticks carry. Tropical storm Elsa brought some much needed rain to drought stricken parts of Maine last week. A big boon for deer ticks who carry Lyme and tick borne diseases. So they just need a very high amount of moisture uh, to stay alive and, and they tend to dry out very quickly. I and mean, these ticks actually just will, will die off if, if it's too dry of a condition. Chuck Lobelchik is a vector ecologist at the Maine Medical Center Research Institute. He leads a team of researchers tracking ticks in all 16 counties. Hot and dry conditions last summer made ticks scarce, an area where new populations are beginning to emerge. Kind of stretching from Moosehead Lake up to uh, Jackman in that area. And, and I think that with the drought last year, we had a very hard time finding any deer ticks as you went further north. But adult tick numbers rebounded this past fall possibly by altering their behavior. They may quest lower and lower in the vegetation, that way they can retain as much moisture as possible. Flip it over and take a shot of the other side. Griffin Dill manages the University of Maine Cooperative Extension Tick Lab in Orno. The lab identifies ticks and tests them for pathogens that cause Lyme and other co-infections for a small fee. Dill says the number of deer tick samples received by the lab so far this year is a little more than a thousand, and that's on track with the nearly 2,500 samples of black-legged ticks it got last year. Longer warm seasons are giving ticks, including new species, the Lone Star, a better chance to find hosts such as deer and field mice. The tick, with a distinct mark on its back, is just beginning to emerge in coastal areas. It's been linked with causing red meat allergies in people who've been bitten. And there are also other factors driving tick exposure and migration. The way we recreate, things like that can also influence the, the tick's ability to persist. Uh, of course, the, the wildlife host that they uh, rely on for, for their meals. For cold weather to kill ticks, temperatures must fall below zero with little or no snow cover. But adult ticks can survive under snow that's deep enough. And the bacteria that ticks carry can actually act like antifreeze and help them withstand the cold. New Center Maine meteorologist Ryan Breton says milder winter temperatures are in the forecast, according to the latest science. Winter nights are getting warmer, and we don't have as many sub-zero days, especially along the coast, if you think of the last several winters. Now, ticks can't be eradicated, we all know that, but knowing where they are here in Maine is vital information for public health authorities. And tomorrow, as we wrap up tick week will tell you how citizen scientists throughout the state are helping do their part tracking ticks on their own properties. Reporting live for South Portland, I'm News Center Maine's Vivian Lee. Back to you, Pat. Thank you, Viv.